is up, Trouble Alert Nation. I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's go right into the news. Our first story, Shane Dawson's documentary series on Jake Paul is blowing up. The first episode got 17 million views. The second episode got 17 million views. And the episode put out two days ago got 11 million views. And there's a brand new episode today, but we'll get into that later first. I want to talk about how crazy these views are. Elijah Daniel, another YouTuber, had this to say. Making a Murderer, one of the biggest, most talked about docu-series to come out in the past few years, got 19 million viewers in 35 days across all episodes. Shane Dawson is almost getting that per episode in less than a week with a homemade series. And if that isn't inspiring, I don't know what is. People, this is what I've been saying. Us YouTubers are the real mainstream. We get more viewers. Now, I responded to Elijah Daniel saying exactly that, and that's when he responded by saying this. But actually, though, Stranger Things Season 2 had an 8 million budget per episode, got around 350,000 views per episode first day. He's getting better ratings than the biggest mainstream shows out right now. Even in their first week, the numbers pale in comparison to his homemade series. But with all these views on Shane's documentary... There is some criticism. True Jordy put out a podcast titled The Mind of Shane Dawson, where he explains that Shane's being overdramatic and exploiting mental health. Popular old school YouTuber known as Sky Does Minecraft, now known as Nat Nobody, had this to say. I didn't watch the Shane Dawson documentaries because I don't like giving Jake Paul more attention, so I'm sure you can imagine my confusion now that I'm seeing a trend of mislabeling sociopaths, internet psychologists, and mental health being used as entertainment. Then he went on to say this. I personally think, and quote me on this, I think the docu-series is going to backfire on Shane. Then, the biggest YouTuber on on the platform, PewDiePie, he uploaded a video titled The Dark Side of Shane Dawson, where he said it's over dramatic, that they were giving a vague description of what a sociopath is. He had a bunch of criticism. And then today, Deji came out with a video titled Are You a Sociopath? And in this video, believe it or not, he kind of defends Jake Paul. He says that all YouTubers are sociopaths. And apparently, FaZe Banks isn't liking the series either. He tweeted out this. Both of these kids have made a career out of manipulating lying countless times, spinning things, playing with everyone's emotions. I'm confident in Shane's ability to get to the bottom of this. I could ruin both of these kids with a tweet. If it comes to that, then so be it. Whoa, okay. So obviously FaZe Banks is talking about Jake Paul and Logan Paul, and he's saying he could ruin them with one tweet? He must have some serious dirt. So Shane was getting a ton of criticism. And well, Shane like was trying to make everybody happy and make sure people weren't mad. And he was responding to a lot of the criticism. And I know he's been talking to a lot of YouTubers behind the scenes because I've been talking to him about talking to other YouTubers behind the scenes to make sure everyone's happy and everyone's good. But I must say, I think Shane hit a breaking point with trying to make everyone happy. And he tweeted this out last night you know what duck it for part four i'm going full t no censoring no holding back no worrying about making other people mad texting me you guys wanted tea i'm gonna bring you the whole damn kettle grab your mops yes here we go bring it on me i want the drama and today shane uploaded part Four. So what did we discover in part four? Well, do you remember that story about 10 months ago where the Martinez twins said that they left Team 10 because Jake Paul was bullying them with pranks nonstop? Well, it turns out the Martinez twins may have been lying because I found Nick Crumpton to be very, very credible. Nick Crumpton had this to say. Roll it. And then all of a sudden, they came out with this video. Yo, what's up, guys? What are the Martinez twins? Saying that we were bullying them. You bully us for like eight months. Now, it's our time. And I'm sorry, Jake. I'm so sorry because of this. <sighs> Using examples from Jake's vlogs, like him being handcuffed to a bed or something for a day or whatever it was. We were in a room, so he started pranking us every single day. Like, we felt so bad. Like, we there felt is just so like, bad. There is just like... Not real. Like, it's <laughs> so strange to say that. I don't... Because we trust Nick. 
We trust Nick. Was it the twins where their bedroom was destroyed and- Good <gasps> bye Martinez room. <laughs> and they were saying in the video like, oh, he destroyed our room. Like he destroyed our room. And we didn't know. Like why? I was like, like what, what the hell are you doing? It's every day bro! They did know. It wasn't even a room, it was a fake room that we built. We actually made that the room in one day. Yeah, in one day. Like so they went to Home Depot. We bought everything, we built it. And like we made them a fake room in the living room and then destroyed it. You built it to destroy it basically. Yeah. Woo, this is fun, man. And if Jake had just said that, or if anyone had just said the pranks are fake, that would have debunked everything the Martinez twins were doing. Wow. That explains a lot and makes Jake Paul seem not that bad. However, you gotta remember, Jake Paul and Nick Crumpton no longer friends. Why did Nick Crumpton leave? Again, it's stemming from daddy. We're talking about daddy Greg Paul. Roll it. He's just... I don't know how to explain that, man. But he forced his way in and somehow, I mean, in the beginning he tried to get involved and I'd talk to Jake and, and he'd come out and it didn't work out and he'd rub everyone up the wrong way and just no one wanted him there and then he ended up disappearing again, going back to Ohio. And it was like a cycle, like Jake would get mad at him and be like, you're fucking everything up, that, this go away. And then, I don't know, he came out again to, when we moved into the new house and I don't know, I just managed to get some kind of authority and start making decisions and everything just started not being what it was supposed to be. And I didn't like it, I didn't like what was happening, so I left. No surprise there. So what is Nick Crumpton up to these days? Well, apparently he's coming out with a new podcast. Nick tweeted out today, it took us almost six months to get ready, but mine and Kate Spade's new podcast is almost here. Apparently it's called The New World Order. I wonder if they're going to be making another group like Team 10, because that's what it sounds like. The New World Order, that's a statement. Also in the news, rice gum. I'm sorry, buddy, but you've become irrelevant. You haven't uploaded it in forever. But anyhow, today he attempted to upload a video and it got taken down. Rice Gum tweeted out, posted a video for the first time in like a month and it gets taken down. The reason I hardly ever upload is because every single video I make seem to always get restricted or demonetized. YouTube hates me. Showing that he made another video in the series, these kids must be stopped and it was taken down for violating YouTube's guidelines. And now for our final story, better help. A bunch of YouTubers on this platform have been promoting this app. Better help. And their pitches are pretty much like this. Hey guys, are you depressed? Are you sad? I know I got depressed and I got sad and I needed somebody to talk to, but I just don't have enough money for a real counselor. So I use this app where I talk to certified counselors online and it starts as low as $35 a month. Start your free trial right now by clicking the link in the description. Recently, Shane did this in his docu-series, uh, Philip DeFranco, Boogie2988, like a bunch of YouTubers have been pushing this for a while. Well, some people started looking into it and they found out that the service is kind of terrible. A lot of reviews are saying that they signed up for the seven day free trial and then the company took a full month, like over $200 out of their bank account. And also our people are complaining that they never actually got a chance to talk to their counselors, that the counselor just wouldn't show up. So yeah, that's pretty bad. But on top of that, where does this company get all these counselors to deal with all the people that sign up? Well, apparently anybody can apply to be a counselor and there's no like background check. This is what I'm hearing allegedly to verify that the counselors on the app are actually counselors. And here's one more interesting allegation. Apparently the YouTubers that are promoting this better help get a hundred dollars for every person that signs up. Meaning, if you were to sign up to this thing, they would ding your bank account for about $200 and they would take $100 of that and give it to the YouTuber. Now think about this. A company has to go to that YouTuber and say, hey, we want you to promote this app. 
We're going to give you $100 for every person that signs up. And then that YouTuber needs to rationalize, okay, I'm going to speak to my depressed fans that need a counselor, and I'm going to get $100 for every depressed fan I have. Wouldn't that cause the YouTuber to talk about depression? Wouldn't that put that YouTuber in the business of making money off of mental health and off of depression? Now, listen, guys, I just got wind of this BetterHelp scam, alleged BetterHelp scam last night. My, me and my team, we haven't had time to go through the facts, but all I'm saying is I know that there are lengthy videos, investigation videos being made on this subject right now, and we're going to cover more on this as the information comes out. So if you're new here and you want to know about that story and every other story that we've covered here, make sure you take the time to subscribe with those notifications on. And if you enjoy this video, please slap a like on it. Drum Alert Nation, now over 3,400,000 subscribers. I'm dyslexic. I just realized I have 4,300,000. Oh, God.